Good morning, Loganites. So today we are going to find out whether I have come up with the best or the worst way to clean a deer head. So last deer season, I thought to myself that with the meat prices going up, we needed to kill a bunch of deer to stock up the freezer. We killed a lot of deer. Well, because of that, we had a lot of deer heads and I wanted to do something with them. So you got to clean them. But with that many deer heads, that's a lot of work to skin it and take off all the meat and stuff and then boil it. It's just, it's a lot of work. I thought to myself, why not? Why don't I do something a little different? Why don't I try to figure out a better way to do this that uses less energy and less time? I remember my granddad used to tell me that an easy way to clean deer heads is just to go bury them. You go bury them for two weeks, you come back in two weeks, and then all the meat's gone, everything's perfect. Well, I kind of misremembered some of that stuff. What he said specifically was that you're supposed to put it into a red ant hill. You set it on top and you tie it to a tree so like something doesn't run off with it. But you set it on top of Red Ant Hill and the ants actually go in there and pick off all of the meat and the bone, everything, clean it up for you so that in two weeks they've had their full meal and now you have a clean deer head. I didn't do that. And obviously as you can see, I live in a subdivision nowadays. I just buried it in my backyard. Now, I buried it in my backyard and I checked it, I don't know, like a month later last year and it was like this soupy, nasty mess. It was smelly. And then my wife found out that I had buried deer heads in the backyard. It just wasn't a good situation. So now it's been one whole year. We're coming up on deer season right now. I'm about to go dig it up and see if this is actually worth doing for you. So this is my corner of stuff. I had to put the pallet on top of it because our little wiener dog found it and came in really smelly one night. And that's when Jennifer found out that I had buried deer heads in the backyard. So I covered up with the pallet so burrito can't get to it. This is it. It's actually a little bit harder to get into that than I thought. I don't know what's been growing in the ground for the past year, so safety first. I just found a, this is a horn. So at least I didn't lose them. I was afraid that I would have lost the deer heads. Like, you know, you bury them and then the dirt settles a year later. So at least I have a horn that I know I'm in the right spot. There's a second horn. Oh man, that sucks. A year later and this is what I've had. This is what I got. I mean, it makes sense. You would think that the, that it would decompose and stuff. I just thought the bones wouldn't decompose like that. Like this is all that's left. I will say the good news is, is it doesn't smell, but it definitely did not do what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to just kind of like let all of the meat fall off and then me pick it up. Maybe if I waited less than a year, I don't, I don't know, man. That's kind of crazy, dude. Let me just go show you what I've done before and show you how well it turned out, why this was an experiment for me. So, I mean, here's the thing. I know how to clean a deer head the right way and, the, and I guess the best way, but I was just trying to figure out a way that would be easier and less, less time consuming and less expensive, really, because it's a lot of effort that goes into it. I mean, look, 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 look. This is a six point that I shot last year and I cleaned it the right way. I peeled off all the skin and stuff, boiled it forever, knocked out all the meat, but it takes like hours. Looks great. It looks great. I had just shot three deer last year in one day and I wanted to do something with the skulls. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't want to sit there and waste all that time doing it. Well, I guess now I know it's not a waste of time. It is just how you do it if you want the skulls to look good. I mean, let me show you something my granddad did. My granddad was a deer hunter for years and he kept every single antler he ever killed. We got this crappy one that I just found, that I, that I just did. I mean, that sucks, that really does suck. And then, look at this. That is a legitimate garbage can of antlers. That's 50 years of hunting right there. You might ask yourself, Logan, what are you gonna do with all that stuff? My goal one day is to make a chandelier. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I am gonna make a chandelier, a pretty one at that. I hope this saves some people out there some effort and some trouble. If you're trying to find a way to clean a deer head, don't just bury it. The next one that I'm gonna try is gonna have to be putting it in like a red ant hill. I gotta try it the way Papa told me to do it, but definitely don't just bury it for a year obviously we know that now i guess i do have to put this disclaimer on there there's a lot of people that don't like deer hunting and i get it i get why at first glance you wouldn't like it but a lot of the reasons people cite that they don't like deer hunting is because of like this whole commercialized 
uh, beef industry, right? Because like, oh, it's like you're you're part of the problem eating meat, that kind of thing. Well, if you subscribe to the fact that the industrialized meat industry is a large polluter of greenhouse gases, and it is, deer hunting is actually a great way to combat that. The deer already exist, they're living naturally in the environment, and they're overpopulated. So if you're a large game hunter, you're shooting to kill, you're not wasting anything you kill, you're not hunting for like the antlers, we don't hunt for the antlers. Generally, I actually like to eat the doe for multiple reasons. One, they taste better. Number two, it does control the population better. I'm not not going to shoot a nice buck, though, because I do like the antlers and I do like to eat. I can see the argument for fishing because when you fish, you throw your hook in. If you pull up a fish you can't keep, well, you just damage the fish or you at least ruined his day and then you send him back to his own home. Hopefully he lives. That's not it with deer hunting. You shoot, you kill, you eat, and you don't waste. And it is regulated by the... Uh, what is it? The Tennessee Wildlife Foundation? I don't know. But it is regulated. I just had to put that disclaimer on there because I do get the fact that like if you live in Memphis, Tennessee, you shouldn't really eat seafood because of all of the bad things you, that had to go through to get it to you. You, sure, you really shouldn't eat seafood. That's the cold hard truth. I don't like that truth because I do like seafood. Also, you shouldn't eat, you know, beef really because it's commercialized growing unless you're doing it yourself with a bunch of land to sustain it. It's kind of hard to justify it. However, you can justify killing eating and harvesting deer squirrel uh anything that's in your natural environment that's kind of what we're supposed to do it's how it was intended that's how it should be so i had to put that disclaimer on there if you're a deer hunter you get it if you're not just open your mind up to it seriously because it is it, if logically it makes sense to deer hunt over eating beef it does you eliminate all of the issues and you actually help control the population for the farmers. Just open your mind to it, that's all I ask. That's it, guys remember, like and subscribe, please share this with a friend, and remember, always keep your corn on the cob.